we are reminded to give to God what belongs to God. In Isaiah, first reading, God calls Cyrus, the pagan ruler, God's own anointed. Even the heathen leaders belong to God, and God can use them to bring divine wonders to the chosen people, the Jews. Our first reading stands out in the Hebrew scriptures for its use of the term Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew word for anointed one. The Hebrew is then translated into Greek as Christos, Christ. It is, only, it is the only place in scripture where a pagan ruler, in this case Cyrus, is given this title reserved for Jewish kings, prophets, and priests. The events that led up to this passage help us to understand why Isaiah considers Cyrus to be an anointed one of God. The Jewish people had been in exile from their own country into the land of Babylon. The Babylonians have made slaves of the chosen people. The exiled believers have prayed for deliverance. Cyrus, Cyrus a Persian king, overpowers the Babylonians and frees the Jews so they can return to their homeland. Not only this, but he is the one God has anointed. <clears throat> he has been appointed as the liberator. Cyrus is not aware that he is being used by God, <clears throat> but God is very much aware of the power that he has given to Cyrus for the sake of the Jews. <clears throat> Turning now to our gospel. The Jewish leaders are out to trap Jesus with this question about the poll tax. According to Roman law, every year all people had to pay the equivalent of one day's wage to Rome. This was besides all the other taxes that they had to pay. <clears throat> if Jesus <clears throat> would say that they should not pay the tax, then his enemies could report him to the Roman governor for defiance of the Roman law. If Jesus was to say that the tax should be paid to Rome, then his enemies, these same religious leaders, would condemn him for not giving all to God. Jesus reverses the trap and catches his own opponents. He does not have a Roman coin with him. He does not carry any coins with graven images on them. That was against the Jewish law. Instead, Jesus asks his questioners to bring forth the coin used for the poll tax. From their own belongings, they pull out a Roman coin. And so, they are the ones carrying around a coin with a graven image and a coin of their oppressors. Jesus asks, whose image is on the coin? Obviously, the image of Caesar is on this Roman coin. Jesus tells them, give it back to Caesar, what belongs to Caesar. Yes, he is telling them to pay the rightful tax to the Romans. But he is also telling them to have nothing to do with anything that belongs to Caesar. Here's the final point. And this is a big one. Jesus insists that they give to God what belongs to God. My friends, everything belongs to God. God created everything. He is in control of everything. We should respond by praising God and giving God all glory that is due our Creator, our Savior, our Redeemer. God is to be uh, adored above all else. <clears throat> St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, in chapter 13, says, there are three things at last, faith, hope, and love. We must have faith in God. We must place our hope in God. We must love God. This is giving back to God 
what God has given us. We must submit all to God for all we have as a result of God providing for us. Always render to God what belongs to God. That is everything except our own sinfulness. And even our sinfulness, we must give to God so we can be forgiven.